Let's start off with a question. And okay, so just a re quick review. We've we've now had two. Fundamental equations or principles or rules or whatever you want to call them uh, when we're, that to use when we're analyzing circuits. And what we want to do now is just try to practice with these qualitatively, and then we'll actually look at a more formal example as well. Uh, first question is, let's say you have two circuits, two different circuits. Okay, so the, que the issue is these are two different circuits, and circuit number one has one battery, and a wire, so the, the particular alloy is nichrome, of some ni uh, nickel and chromium uh, alloy called nichrome, uh, that has a fairly low mobility so that we can actually get uh, fairly, uh, we can get measurable currents that aren't, aren't too high. Uh, nichrome wire, length L, cross-sectional area A, and we know the electric field inside wire, the, the this, this circuit, this wire is E1. And then we have a second circuit, which consists of one battery, same, same EMF of the battery. So we can, for instance, there may be both 1.5 volt EMF batteries. Also connected to a nichrome wire that has, a, uh, that's longer, three times as long as the wire in the first circuit. Same cross-sectional area. It has a different electric field, or we'll just call the electric field E2. How do the electric field in the two different circuits compare? Are, is E1 and E2 equal, uh, are they equal? Is E1 equal to three times E2, E1 equal to E2 over three? Now, I have a couple of questions like this, and I would highly recommend that you actually write out what the node rule, what the loop rule says for each individual circuit, okay? Circuit number one and circuit number two, you should get fairly simple equations. And just also remember that the current is proportional to the electric field inside the wire, and that's the relationship, right? Okay, and we're all over the map. So how do you actually answer a question like this? Well, as I said, taking a guess, or just kind of thinking about it without actually writing anything down probably isn't going to work. So let's see if we can reason this out using these two fundamental rules that we have. So I have circuit number one has some, some EMF value, and we have a wire connected to it. And I'll kind of draw it so we show some thickness in the wire. This wire has a length L, has a cross-sectional area A, and it's somehow like ni nichrome. Now, I, we don't know, I haven't told you anything about what the material properties of nichrome are, but we do know that the second circuit has a wire that's made out of the same material. So that means what's the same? The mobility and uh, current? Well, we'll find out, but in terms of just material properties, the, the N, which is what, what's N? Number of electrons per unit volume, right? So we know that's the same for both. Well, and we also said that it's the same battery or the same type of battery, so we'll say it's the same EMF in both. So what do we know? Well, we know, let's apply the, apply the loop rule. Loop rule says that uh, we go round trip and the potential difference has got to be equal to zero. So I'm going to, we know well, that the electric field, actually by the node rule, we know that the electric field everywhere in a uniform thickness wire should be the same. Okay, so that's just going to be E1. And that's positive, that's negative, right? So if I apply the loop rule here, Let's say I start at the positive terminal, go around in the direction of the electric field, and then go through the battery, and go back to where I started from. Go around in this direction, I'm going in the direction of the electric field, so the potential sh difference should be negative, okay? And so this, the magnitude is going to be, so we have a negative, and it's going to be what? What am I going to get for the magnitude of the electric, the p magnitude of the potential difference in terms of the electric field and the length? EL, okay, minus E1 times L, fine. 
And then I'm back to the negative terminal, the battery. And so when I go across here, I get a positive or negative potential difference. I'm going to go positive. I'm going from the negative to the positive. I'm going against the direction of the electric field inside the battery, which may be, it's going to be different than E1. But that potential difference in an ideal battery has got to be numerically equal to the EMF. So I have a plus EMF equal to zero. I know that E1 then is equal to EMF over L. Okay. Well, if I do the same thing here, I have E2 pointing in that direction, right? And now the length is 3L. So if I go through, find the potential difference going from the positive to negative, it's going to be what? So I'm starting here. I'm going around in that direction, going along the direction of the electric field. And so I get for the potential difference, what? E E3, E times 3L, right? E times 3L. It's going to be negative, E3 L. That's this, we're calling this E2, okay? And then I go across the battery and I get another contribution of the EMF, right? So I'm set it equal to zero. So E2 is equal to what? EMF over 3L. So how does it compare to the electric field in the first circuit? It's three times smaller. E2 is equal to one-third of E1. So the correct answer, well, this is they're putting E1 on the other side of the equation. So the correct answer is 2. E1 is equal to 3 times E2. Okay. So get all else being equal, same battery, same thickness. You have just a single type of material. All you're doing is changing the length. Then the electric field goes down, right? The electric field changes from we're not, again, we're, we're comparing two different electric fields in two different circuits. This isn't a sort of a node rule situation. We're looking at the relating two currents in the same circuit. So the electric field depends on the length, right? So the field is going to go down. All right. Well, how about this? Different situation. S circuit number one has a single battery, micron wire of length L and with a cross-section of A, and the electric field in that wire is E1. Our second circuit has the same type of battery, same EMF, same alloy, it's nichrome, same length, but now we're changing the cross-sectional area. So how does the field, the electric field in the first circuit compare to the electric field in the second circuit? All right, well... I don't think you're actually taking this seriously. The only way, again, let's work it out. We start from loop rule, node rule. So here's, here's circuit number one again, right? That, that hasn't changed. And so we figured out that E1 is equal to EMF over L. Well, here's circuit number two. What's the same? The length, okay. But what's different? Area, okay. So here's... Here's a big fat wire, all right? Okay. It's a cartoon, okay? It doesn't have to be exact. The idea, well, in fact, I didn't even, I drew the, air, the length too long, but you get the idea, okay? So this is L and this is L, all right? Well, if I apply the, uh, the loop rule to this second circuit, what am I going to get for E2? The exact same thing, right? The electric field, all the uh, loop rule depends on is just the electric field and the length. And so we're going the same length in, in terms of our path, and we're, we've got the same battery, so this is the same EMF. So I work it out, I have negative E2 times L plus EMF equals zero. E2 is EMF over L. Okay? What did we just show? The electric fields are equal, okay? So this is one of these things where you can sit about it and just sort of take a guess and, and, kind, of re and kind of go by how it feels. But if you don't actually take the physical principle seriously, you're, you're going to go astray, okay? Now, does this make sense? We have the same, we have a thicker wire 
same electric field in both. Well, something's got to be different, right? So the same situation, but what? how did the currents compare? How does the electron current compare in circuit one versus circuit two? This is the same situation as we just had. We're talking about some, some of us up front have mentioned the drift speed here. V is equal to UE, right? So you can think about that as well. We'll talk about that in a second. All right, well, we're not falling for one. That's good, but we're still not quite there yet. Which wire is which, okay? I, wire one is the, the, the uh, smaller thickness, right? So we have I1 is equal to N A U E1. And I2 is equal to N 4A, right? Four times that area, U E2, which is the same E, so I'll just say E1. And so we have four times N A U E1. So I2 is four times I1, but I1 is one-fourth, right? I1 is one-fourth of I2. So be careful which one they're asking for. But you have a thin, the, the, the key idea here is this is the thinner wire, this, the electric fields are the same, right? And it turns out, in this particular case, the drift speeds are the same. The mobility is a material property. It's the same nichrome alloy in both, right? So the mobility is the same. So the electrons are moving the same speed in both of these circuits, but in the second circuit, you just have a thicker wire. So, you're, so because it's proportional to the area, you just have more electrons per second because they're, mo they're moving at the same speed, but they just have a fatter pipe, essentially, right, fatter wire. So you can get more electrons per second moving past um, than in wire num or circuit number one, okay? Questions here? This shouldn't probably have caused as much trouble as maybe it did. So, yeah, yes. Uh, uh, okay, so the question is, do you do the loop rule? Does the loop rule take priority? The, you got to be careful about the node rule. The node rule is talking about I in and I out within a single circuit. There's no rule that says I can relate the current in this circuit to a current in a different circuit. Okay, so I so so I can't say current here is equal to current here. It's two different two different situations, right? What is the node rule telling us? Well, this is a very simple circuit. We have the same thickness of wire throughout. So all it's telling me is that anywhere in this wire, because the current everywhere is the same, so if I pick any, any piece of this as a node, I in is equal to I out, which means N A U E in is equal to N A U E out. All this is telling me is that I gotta have the same electric field throughout that wire, okay? And similarly, I can apply the node rule to this circuit and say I gotta have the same electric field throughout that wire. But then what I do is I apply the loop rule to two different circuits and find, oh, look, those electric fields in this particular case turn out to be the same because it's the same length. Okay. Someone else had a, a question. Yes. You, um, that's a good question. N is the number of electrons per cubic meter. So if, if you knew... Um, Let's see. You could work out if, if the, so we know from various uh, material properties and measurements that metals give up a, a certain number of electrons to the mobile electron C. Okay, and I think most transition metals typically give up one electron uh, to the electron C that's free to, to float about. Okay, so if um, if you knew, for example, the density of the metal, okay, so the metal has a certain number of grams per cubic meter, and you knew the molar mass, right, the number of um, grams per mole, you could figure out essentially the number density of atoms, the number of 
atoms there are in a cubic meter of a particular material. Or not, and then you can say, okay, if each atom is then giving up one electron, I've got n, right? So, it, so really, it's, it's just depending on sort of the density of the material. How many atoms are there per cubic meter in this material? If they each give up one electron, then that's the number of electrons per cubic meter. So it, so it really just depends on sort of the physical pro properties, density, molar uh, mass of that particular uh, metal. Okay. The mobility... Um, What does it depend on? Um, it essentially is a measurement of how easily can electrons move through a particular metal. Okay, how if, if given a certain electric field, how fast are they going to move? And so you're so essentially you're measuring how often do they collide with the uh, the lattice, right? We have this this sort of simple model of the sort of a ball and spring model of a solid where we have these atoms bound by spring-like forces and then electrons are coming through and occasionally they collide with one of the atoms that make up the, the lattice of the structure and then they, they give their energy to the lattice, right? And so, so we have this sort of start-stop motion and we, we average that out to see how fast the electrons are moving. What things could affect the mobility? Well, for example, the temperature. Okay, if in sort of a very simple, simplistic picture, if you imagine these atoms are vibrating with a higher amplitude, then there's going to be a, and that essentially is what temperature is at the microscopic level, right? The, at the sort of thermal energy is a measurement of how much the atoms are vibrating around. Well, then you can kind of see that if they're vibrating with a larger amplitude, there's going to be a greater chance for one of these electrons to actually hit uh, and lose its kinetic energy and slow down. Essentially, the resistance, we'll, we'll talk about resistance in the next class, the resistance goes up because it gets hotter, okay? And so, therefore, the mobility goes down. So, mobility is really another one of these physical property measurements, but it depends on temperature. The hotter something is, the, the less easily the electrons can, can travel through. Yes, so in principle, a, you know, a, uh, iron may have a different number of uh, atoms. You know, iron's denser than copper, for example. So iron may have a larger number of atoms per, per cubic meter than copper does. Now, I'm not sure of that. In fact, most atoms... Let me rephrase that. Okay. The... The number of atoms per cubic meter is something that comes really from the, the quantum mechanical properties, the size of the atom, right? And that's something we can sort of reason out from these things, which we can look at up on a, from a periodic table. So those, those are purely material properties. N and U are pure, purely material properties. Okay. And it doesn't matter how much of a of substance you have because it's on a per, N is on a per cubic meter basis, right? So it's independent of how much you have. And the mobility is, is sort of on a per electron basis in some sense. So it, it doesn't matter how much you have. It's just purely a material property.